Hi guys, welcome to Hope with Jonathan podcast. And on this podcast, we will share the patient's personal story with battling kidney disease, dialysis, transplant, and more. Guys, we'll also share stories of hope and encouragement for those that are in need of a living kidney donor. We will also advocate for them, a living donor, to step forward to give them the miracle gift of life of transplant. Guys, based upon my personal near-death experience with kidney disease, I started this streaming show called Hope with Jonathan and also this podcast, Hope with Jonathan Podcast. Guys, if you want to hear more stories like this, please stay tuned. Hope with Jonathan Podcast is a Hope Media production. Never let hope become a memory. Hope with Jonathan Podcast is a Hope Media production. Hope with Jonathan Podcast is in collaboration with Impact America Media, where we give hope to patients to continue on, stay motivated, inspire, and encourage them to continue in the journey. For more information on Impact America Media, please visit impactamericamedia.com. Again, Hope with Jonathan podcast is in collaboration with Impact America Media. And we ended up, uh, uh, told her, this is what I want, this is the food I want, you know, we gotta be a little bit more renal friendly. And so we did that. And, but when I got, before I got off the phone, she says, you're pretty conceited, honey. <laughs> and I've told people before, sometimes there's things in life that you've been through that you kind of earn a little bit of right to be just a little bit conceited. I, I would not do it all the time. It's like a once in a lifetime thing. <laughs> so that's where we all started with that. And we had a wonderful birthday party. And that night, my cousin and I were playing some music in the music room. I know he was playing the piano. I'm not sure what I was playing at the time. There were several different instruments we had in the room. And so we ended up the de- deciding to play. I think we started into some Disney music and then kind of bumped out of it. And then my brother-in-law's wife came in the room and she wanted to hear a Disney princess song, which we did. And then afterwards, that's when she came in the room and said she'd like to talk to me and told me there she would. She had felt the burden since the springtime of 2016 to donate to me and that- Welcome to Hope with Jonathan Podcast. This is your host, Jonathan Trailer, And that was my friend, my good friend, Mr. Anthony Reed from Kidney Trails. Anthony has an awesome story, guys. 
and uh, Anthony came on uh, not too long ago and did a, a live I- interview with me on Hope with Jonathan and the Hope with Jonathan podcast uh, over on Facebook and YouTube. You can watch that live. I got to be honest with you, going back and looking at that uh, recording, uh, this podcast, this audio podcast is going to be a lot better. I was probably having some internet issues um, going back and looking at that recording. But um, guys, listen, this podcast is going to be amazing. Like I said, Anthony has an amazing story. And uh, that little clip there is just the beginning. So uh, if the clip uh, sparked your interest, just wait until you hear the rest of the story. Again, guys, Mr. Anthony Reed from www.kidneytrails.com where you can find uh, blogs on there. Uh, they have comic strips. They have all kind of different things going on over there. Uh, Anthony also has a podcast, Kidney Trails Podcast. Uh, he's got a lot of different projects going on over there that is amazing. A lot of new uh, things coming out soon in the future. I can't let uh, all the uh, cats out of the bag yet, but uh, it's going to be an amazing, amazing adventure with www.kidneytrails.com. Again, guys, you go over there, check out the website, and uh, stay tuned for this incredible, incredible transplant story uh, from Mr. Anthony Reed. Hey guys, go over to www.kidneywarriormerch.com. Submit your story today and get a shot at being the Warrior of the Month. If you're selected as the Warrior of the Month, you'll get a chance to interview with Hope with Jonathan Podcast. Whether you're a kidney warrior, kidney uh, dialysis patient, or even a kidney transplant patient, or maybe you've just been diagnosed with kidney disease. Go over to www.kidneywarriormerch.com and submit your story today. Kidney Warrior Merch is a supporter of Hope with Jonathan podcast. Again, guys, that's www.kidneywarriormerch.com. Hey guys, welcome back to another show with Hope with Jonathan. Uh, this is going to be a very, very exciting show. I hope you guys will get involved and, and please share this uh, with all of your friends. Um, please uh, be engaged and be commenting in the show. Uh, we definitely would appreciate it. Uh, guys, we have a very, very special guest today, um, Anthony Reed from Kidney Trails. If you haven't been over to kidneytrails.com, I would like for you to please go over and please check out www.kidneytrails.com kidneytrails.com, doing some amazing things uh, with uh, writing and uh, sharing of uh, different blogs, uh, different kidney warriors sharing their story. Um, Awesome, awesome stuff over there. And uh, Anthony is a kidney warrior himself, uh, battled uh, kidney disease, uh, did dialysis, and also ended up receiving the gift of life transplant. Uh, I'm not going to tell Anthony's story. I want to go ahead and bring him on and allow him to share his uh, personal journey. And uh, guys, you're in for a real treat. Anthony is uh, also a uh, a, a kidney coach, uh, a writer himself. Um, And like I said, mentioned, he's also a kidney warrior. So without further ado, let's bring on uh, Mr. Anthony Reed.
Anthony, how are you, sir? I'm doing wonderfully well, exceedingly great, and the day gets any better, Jonathan. I think it's just going to be plain awesome. <laughs> how are you? That sounds great. I'm doing really well. I'm doing really well. I'm blessed to be here. So um, thank you for the opportunity to interview you and bring you on Hope with Jonathan. I appreciate the opportunity myself. It's a real honor to be here on the show with you. Thank you. Well, you're very welcome. Um, hey, Anthony, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about yourself, uh, who you are, um, uh, talk about maybe your, your family a little bit and where you're living at. Okay, so um, as, as Jonathan introduced me, uh, my name is Anthony. I am uh, live here in Virginia uh, in the beautiful Blue Ridge Mountains. Mm-hmm. It is a beautiful place to live. I have a wonderful family, a, a good wife, and uh, three beautiful children. All right. That sounds awesome. Uh, the Blue Ridge Mountains. I grew up in Kentucky, so I think I'm a neighbor to you in uh, Virginia there. Yes, you're not too far away from us in some people's eyes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that that's amazing. Um, and I'm, I'm sure that your, your family is uh, very supportive of, uh, you know, what you're doing with the kidney trails and uh, also, you know, throughout your walk as a as a kidney warrior as well. Uh, Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Actually, my wife actually works with us as well in within the kidney trails. She's our editor in chief. So she ends up doing a lot of the editing that uh, when we go to post it, she generally looks at it before it actually goes out in publication. So she's very supportive of what we are doing. Yeah. So, guys, uh, as I forementioned, uh, Anthony's also a a kidney warrior himself, uh, actually experienced a a kidney failure, uh, had to do dialysis. Uh, Anthony, uh, why don't you uh, share us, share with us a little bit about your personal journey with battling kidney disease? But my journey starts off, I look back in uh, 1990, even though I wasn't battling kidney disease at the time, it's where my journey truly started. My parents actually adopted me from Guatemala City, Guatemala, and brought me over here to America. And what a wonderful opportunity that is. And that was, and I'm so grateful, you know, back then I really didn't understand the full extent of what they did. You know, all I've really wanted was uh, someone to love me, care for me and feed me and put me to sleep, you know, as a, as a, I forget how many months, five month old child or something around that. And so lived a pretty normal life, did pretty normal things within, uh, you know, just an all American kid, so to speak. And, but um, age 18, everything was going well. I just graduated high school and was looking for um, a future, uh, planning out my future. And then I ended up having a stroke due to hypertension or high blood pressure is extremely high. And so we got that all straightened out. And then I decided that, you know, hey, I'm 18, 19, 20, you know, every 18, 19, 20 year old kid, you know, they know better than everybody else. And decided to stop taking the blood pressure medication that was prescribed to me. And at age 22, I, due to hypertension, due to the high blood pressure, I was end up diagnosed with end stage renal disease. I went into the hospital uh, in the ER because of the fact I was having a buzzing in the back of my head. And being that I had that stroke at age 18, it really concerned me because I knew that uh, from what they told me, I think they said I was a centimeter away from either being dead or paralyzed. And I definitely didn't want to get that centimeter. So we ended up going to the ER and was diagnosed uh, that that um, that morning with uh, end stage renal disease, and that the docs pretty much said you really need to start right now. But the nephrologist wasn't able to. I don't know why he wasn't able to at the time to make it. A, I think some kind of emergency had came up, and so I ended up making an appointment to see him. And within uh, I think it was that the next two or three days, I saw him and we started dialysis. And that was the start of what I like to call the journey of the kidney trails. It was something that was unknown, unexpected, but it was something that I had to do to be able to uh, live and to extend my life at the time. Otherwise, uh, from what they told me, if I would not have done dialysis, I probably more than likely would not have lasted through the weekend because it was so bad. We did dialysis for about four years, and then in 2017, we 
we were able to have a kidney transplant, which I'm very grateful for. And that's kind of, you know, where we're at now. We're still having kidney transplants, doing well. It's working very well at this time. So very excited for that. Wow, Anthony, that's an amazing story. Very inspiring. Um, when you say you got your transplant, uh, do you want to, you know, kind of expand a little bit about how you ended up receiving your transplant? Yeah, that was a little different. Uh, one of the things that I, during dialysis, is I found out is that really dialysis was a great teacher. And life is a great teacher. And there's many lessons within our experiences. There's different challenges that we may have to face and that we, if we learn from them, we can overcome them and be able to share our journey and our experiences with others to be able to teach them to be able to go further. And one of the things is I kind of let my, got comfortable with the food that I was eating and got a little too uh, lenient on the cheese and the peanut butter. Probably not yeah. a good idea at the time, but uh, I kind of self-inflicted that at the time and ended up uh, in the spring of 2016, my phosphorus was extremely high, or at least it was the highest that I had ever been. It was in the 9 to 10 range. And uh, that was something that really was a challenge for me to get down, and not just with the food and the medication, because we ended up having to take medication for that, but the battle for that truly for me was in the mind, how I thought I have told people many times that was the closest I came to death because of some of the things that had happened when I, when my foster started creeping up and then I ended up having a conversation with them, um, one of the nephrologists, uh, he said that if, if something wasn't to change or something did not change, then that in six months, calciflaxis could set in, which would lead to a very slow and painful death. It's, some people say, well, that probably wasn't the best thing to say. It wasn't the wording actually isn't bad. It's the way I interpreted it as a, a dialysis patient. You know, you, we can say something and mean well with it and it's nothing wrong with that. And somebody take it completely opposite. And I was guilty of that at the time. But also what I found out when I was on dialysis, too, is my thinking wasn't as clear. Yeah. It was still a little foggy through through that whole journey. I'm, from that, more than likely, the toxin build up, the, you know, up, down, you go to dialysis. I did hemodialysis, so I would go Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I did a Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. And I'm yeah. sure, you know, in between up, down, up, down kind of made it a little bit more difficult to to uh, to be able to take some thoughts in. Yeah. And so it really, really – was a battle for me. Um, that night was very difficult when I went out to my truck and, and saw the uh, kind of where I was at, but also where I could have been, could be. And yeah. they, one of the thoughts is you've got six months to live. I had just been married a year, a little over a year, year and a half, something like that. Yeah. And the thoughts is you're going to leave your wife. What about your parents? You know, they took all this uh, time and effort. They adopted you. They brought you, from Guatemala, are you going to be a memory? You know, what? where are you going to be at? You've only got six months to live. Wow. And I had to push past that. And it was a lot of long nights and a lot of um, long days sometimes, too, because it really yeah. wear down on my mind. And so I finally came to the conclusion that life was either going to go, with, go on with me or without me. It didn't matter. And that I really, truly needed to... Uh, buckle up and do the best that I knew what to do to get that under control, but also maintain a positive mindset. And that was a challenge. And yeah. so finally I decided, I told my wife, I said, you know what? I didn't even tell my wife. I told my wife nothing, told nobody, nothing, nobody knew uh, except uh, the, the physician, myself and my care team. I didn't want to burden my family or other friends with that. I just didn't feel it was right. I felt it was my battle to fight. And some said, well, you need the support. You do need the support. But that to me was my, my value to, to travel. And that's sure. one of those times that I call, it was one of those valley in the mountain times, even though you're, I feel like no matter whether in life, I feel like it's, you're always traveling up. 
And, and sometimes there's these valleys in the mountain that can, it seems like you're going down, but if you keep going, you're going to go even further. And that's similar to what happened. And so one day I come away, I said, Hey, um, I'm going to throw my own birthday party. I'm going to, uh, I want these people over. Of course, this was pre COVID days. We understand that. And we ended up, uh, I uh, told her, this is what I want. This is the food I want. You know, we got to be a little bit more renal friendly. And so we did that. And, but when I got, before I got on the phone, she says, you're pretty conceited, honey. <laughs> and I've told people before, sometimes there's things in life that you've been through that you kind of earn a little bit of right to be just a little bit conceited. I would not do it all the time. It's like a once in a lifetime thing. <laughs> so that's where we all started with that. And we had a wonderful birthday party. And that night, my cousin and I were playing some music in the music room. I know he was playing the piano. I'm not sure what I was playing at the time. There were several different instruments we had in the room. And so we ended up de- deciding to play. I think we started into some Disney music and then kind of bumped out of it. And then my brother-in-law's wife came in the room and she wanted to hear a Disney princess song, which we did. And then afterwards, that's when she came in the room and said she'd like to talk to me and told me there she would, she had felt the burden since the springtime of 2016 to donate to me. And that's another thing that I found out during that time is during some of the hardest challenges of life, the victory awaits on the other side or, you know, keep, keep pushing on during that. And finding that out later on when I found that out, it was just amazing that uh, during the same time I was going through that, that time that she had felt the burden. She heard that what I call the still small voice to be able and listened and then offered to uh, donate her kidney. And when that happened, you know, at first I didn't know what to do. Did I laugh? Did I cry? Do I what do I do? I was just kind of shocked. The one thing I did remember to do is I gave her my uh, transplant coordinator's number and gave him the card so she could get that going. And she started that within, I think within a few days, she had already passed the uh, phone, phone interview and started with that. So that's kind of how that came about. And then about two weeks later, uh, my wife woke me up at five o'clock in the morning on a Saturday morning. My only day off to let me know that uh, we were expecting our very first child. So it was uh, a lot of things going on during, during 2016 and 2017. We, uh, I think February we got approved to go for transplant. And then in April, we were transplanted April 13th, 2017. And then my son was born about two weeks later. So there was a lot going on during that time from, from the spring of 2016 to the uh, spring of 2017. And we were almost on dialysis four years. We were like two weeks shy of being on dialysis. So that was uh, quite amazing to me. Wow. What what a story. What a story. What a gift of love, you know, um, especially evidently God knew that you were fixing to be a really busy man. And he foreseen this and, uh, you know, gave you the ability to be able to be uh, transplanted uh, just in the nick of time. Uh, because, you know, you were fixing to embrace fatherhood. And uh, so what a what an amazing story. Yeah, he does. His time is perfect and everything. Oh, for you know, sure. It, it is. I've, I've, you know, of course, that's another thing I found out. There was just uh, that amazing, impeccable timing. It couldn't have been any better. You couldn't have asked for anything better. So true. So true. I believe I believe in timing. Uh, I believe in fate and uh, things happen for a reason. And all, all of these things, um, but uh, God, God's timing is perfect timing. So I definitely believe in, believe in that for sure. But um, well, hey Anthony, um, as a result of your experience with uh, kidney disease, and uh, you know, you had already mentioned you had done uh, hemodialysis. Uh, what profession did you end up uh, taking on to do as a as a career? So the one thing is, it's interesting that you asked that because about, I think it was about three months, let's see, uh, it, May, June, July, about three to four months later, I had the wonderful opportunity to 
actually go into the dialysis field and work at a clinic, actually the clinic I used to run in as a biomedical equipment technician. Uh, or some people call me the water dude, the machine repair technician, but that's what we ended up going into it as. And a lot of times, you know, they're not seen in the clinic. I can remember during my time in dialysis, there was, we had, um, there was two biomeds that I remember. Um, one, I didn't see him very often, but the other one, he would always come by my chair and make sure to talk to me when possible. I know not all the times, you know, now I know it's not always possible to go around to talk to him as, as much as I'd like to, but he would, he made a really big impression on, on my life. And after finding that out and then starting the job, it was just, that's my, what I call my day job. And then of course, uh, Kenny trails in my spare time. Yeah. And, and so you, do you think your connection with, you know, kidney disease, dialysis, and, and uh, of course transplant motivated you uh, to want to be involved as, as being a, a technician uh, and working on machines? Well, the one thing is, is that I was in the water treatment industry. I've been in the plumbing industry since I was uh, 13. I was actually working in a family business. So my family had a business and we were able to work in that. And then I got into household water treatment and then into, uh, ended up leaving that to go work in some sales at a, uh, at a corporation, did plumbing sales for them for a while. And then the schedule just got too rough with my dialysis and everything else. So I ended up getting an opportunity to go to a municipality plant as a water treatment lead technician. So I've always been kind of in the water treatment industry. And at the time I was on dialysis, I didn't quite know what biomed was at the time. I didn't know they were the water, the, you know, like I said, the water dudes, but after, um, I think it was two years on, I uh, was on dialysis when I found out what a biomed was. And then I made up in my mind that I was going to be a biomed, not only a biomed for dialysis, but a biomed in that clinic that I ran at. That was my goal. I said, this is what I'm going to do. I've got this much time to get a transplant. It's funny, like we said about the timing within the two years. And that's what I said is in two years, I want to have my transplant and be able to, to work as a biomed. Well, while that all may sound like it's feasible and in some people's eyes it probably wasn't feasible because i'm an o positive blood type and they took a little bit longer my transplant team said originally at first it was going to be four to eight years and then it was five to nine years so when i was told that i still had another three years before you know somebody you know i got that call or i was even eligible to get that call unless it was living donation so to say hey in two years i'm going to to not only get my transplant, but I'm going to be a biomed. It, yeah. Some people may think, well, that's, that was crazy. Actually, it, that's what happened. I just kept my mindset. That's what I'm going to do is because I wanted to be more involved in it. And I'm so grateful that I am. Yes. Again, the uh, impeccable timing of, of God there on your life. Um, you know, um, I think that played a major part. And the fact that you had already had that as a vision in your mind, um, uh, it's just that's that's so inspiring uh, to me that you had already envisioned that in your in your mind, that that's what you wanted to do. And then you actually achieved that goal. Right. I think of that saying from uh, where there's no vision, the people perish. I think that's very important to have a vision for your life. And no matter where you're at in life, you could be on dialysis. You could be in transplant. You may not even have kidney disease. You could just be getting out of high school saying, hey, I want to do something with my life. Get a vision of where you want to go and what you want to be. I have something, you know, it's like um, I think Zig Ziglar says or said, he said, you know, know where you're aiming, you know, don't don't hit nothing dead on the head. <laughs> Don't yeah. be that, you know, have a vision of where you're at, where you want to be in yeah. life, where you're at and then where you want to be. Make a plan on how you're going to get from point A to point B. And at least, you know, if something were to happen that maybe you didn't quite make it in that time frame, at least you're closer than you would have been if you wouldn't have started. Right. And so, you know, I, I took one of those steps by being the lead maintenance technician for the, the municipality water treatment plant, learning about the municipality, and then went up, I felt, a step up into the medical medical side of things as well. Yeah. 
Well, you know, you, you you can have faith in things, but until you put works behind it, uh, you know, it's 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 dead according to the scripture. So, uh, you know, you can't just sit back and wait for it to happen. So it sounds like you you got engaged and actually was working working uh, to try to get things done, and then by your faith in God, uh, he he allowed it to happen for you. Um, you know, through through faith and works. Right, right. Action's very important. You can have all the faith in the world, not have a bit of action and get nothing. <laughs> yep. But you can have a little bit of faith and a lot of action and get everything. Yes, sir. That's good. Well, Anthony, let's talk about kidney trails and uh, what motivated you to start uh, kidney trails. Um, for those of you who don't know, uh, kidney trails is a website that you can go to www.kidneytrails.com. Uh, please go check it out. Uh, but I want Anthony to talk to us about what motivated him to uh, start Kidney Trails. So Kidney Trails, um, what people see today is something that started in my mind back about a year after starting dialysis. I can still remember the place that was at, the chair that I was sitting in. I believe it was station three in the clinic that I was at. And I remember looking at thinking, what is there for us patients to be able to take from? Where can I find other people's stories? And at the time, there wasn't a lot of organizations or companies doing it. And so I did find a few of them, the, the normal, you know, the, the NKF, the AKP, all these different ones. And I found it. And so I actually joined NKF as one of their peers because I felt like I had something that I could share, not only a story, but I also wanted to share the lessons. But in, in it all, I was looking for something a little bit, uh, I, I, let's see, how can I say this? I was looking for something that, that brought, that taught me not just about dialysis, not just about the the medical side of things, but I wanted to know more about maybe the mental battle, the 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 thoughts. Because one of the things I did find out was 99% of the battle of dialysis is in the mind for the patients. And that 1% is everything else because I saw so many people lose it in their mind. You know, you can, you can just tell by their countenance. And Jonathan, I don't know if you saw it when you were in your clinic, you'd see somebody come in, you realize that that look, that that give up look that the look that says, Hey, I'm done. Oh yeah. And, and then, you know, it wasn't long until, you know, you never saw them. And of course you may ask, but you know, of course nobody could tell you anything. And so oh, yeah. I saw that and I was like, how in the world does this all coordinate? You know, there's a lot of different things out there. So I joined the NKF Pierce to share my story, but during the time that I was uh, coaching people or teaching people at the time, uh, I also was learning from people that I call kidney coaches. And those were people that have been on dialysis for a little bit, had experienced and had a different mindset. There, I would find those people that had this different mindset that would help that help them. And I, they would say, well, you know, I'm truly blessed. Well, we're on this machine. It's not saying that I, didn't have a positive mindset you know that was my thought and says well if you look around you we could be six feet under instead of above ground to have the opportunity to live so it was those that really helped me to kind of to teach me along the journey and then of course I started listening to other different speakers I listened to um, motivational speakers I listened to uh uh, people like Zig Ziglar, Jim Rohn, Les Brown, different ones, and took a little bit from each one of them. I didn't try to follow just one. One thing is don't be a follower, be a student. That's probably one of the better advices that anybody can, can take is yeah. don't, you know, with these different ones, don't be a follower, be a student. That's what I say with, you know, when people read my story, maybe some lessons, these are lessons that I share. This is what's helped me take what can help you so that you don't, you know, I don't, you know, because if you're a follower, people can, and you walk off the ledge, everybody else is going to walk off the ledge too. <laughs> so be a student, learn from everybody. And that's what I did. And so this idea started in 2014. I was sitting in that chair and I remember it wasn't this big, uh, big, loud voice, big message, big, this is what you're going to do. It was a still small voice, a nudge. And I remember sitting in that chair and the tears just 
poured down on my eyes because I realized that there was a greater calling in my life than where I was at, what I was doing, what I was currently involved in at the time. And, and that's not, it's, so NKF was kind of my start into getting a little bit more involved. And then in, I tried to do it in 2019 after I got translated, tried to do it uh, two, two times, failed miserably both times, didn't even get above the ground. And then 2020, when the pandemic hit, um, I, all the speaking engagements I had got canceled. And it's like, well, people, I want people to know the story, know the lessons so that maybe it might help them. And that's kind of where everything got started. So 2014 is when I felt, felt the call. And from that, learning through dialysis and transplant up to now, that's where it's all built up from. So it all started with, it all started, I say, with that still small voice saying, this is what you need to do with your life. Yeah. Well, that, that's definitely inspiring. Um, some great words of wisdom there, guys, from Anthony Reed from Kidney Trails. Um, amazing. Um, guys, please go over www.kidneytrails.com. Please go check it out. Uh, another question for Anthony also is uh, who's all involved with Kidney Trails? Okay, so the first, um, as I said, my wife, she's our editor-in-chief. She actually, like I said, looks at everything. And I will say that pretty soon a story is going to be coming from her about what it was like to marry a dialysis patient, what it was like to uh, go through the transplant uh, because they truly go with it with us, through it with us. And then, uh, so she's my editor in chief. Then I had Dwaylon Williams. Um, I met him at NANT in 2019. I was speaking to him and he was the president at that time of NANT, uh, National Association of Nephrologist Technicians. And met him. And then in 2020, I happened to message him or call him. I don't remember how at all. He can speak better to that. And so he's my communications director. He's he has done a f- fabulous job. He's got this wonderful story out there. He decided he wanted to write. A, he first came on as a author, and then he I end up saying, "Hey, look, you want to do communications? Do the communications director." And so it was. It's interesting because he started the story called "I Don't Know About This: A Renal Patient's Initial Treatment," and he talks about this character in the story, A W. That's her first day in treatment. And from he's had uh, he's not only talked about the technician side of it, but he's brought in guest authors on his story. So he has uh, he has uh, a water uh, biomedical equipment technician come in, came in and talked to her. He has uh, I think he's got other plans for other people. I'm one of the guest authors with the story, which is absolutely phenomenal. When I was writing it, it was a little different because I've been writing my story and then I had to switch gears and put myself in a place on as a kidney coach. And that's, I was speaking to AW. And he also even had, um, I think it's Ashley Smash McGinnis that uh, was involved in a story and she wrote a poem. So he's done fabulous work in this story. I'm not going to let too much because I believe he's coming in the show with you uh, very, very soon to talk about his uh, story on that. So I'm not going to get too much involved in that, but he's done a fabulous job with that. And we are, I'm very excited to have that and what's coming up. That's going to be absolutely exciting. I'm, I'm thrilled that he's doing this. Yeah. But uh, hey, guys, uh, Anthony reached out to me, I believe, in uh, January. I believe it was in January. Uh, I so. Yeah. And uh, he he had spoken with me also about uh, being a writer, a, a blogger and to write a, a blog. And I ended up I ended up writing a blog. So if you're interested, it's based upon my personal story. Uh, you can definitely go over there to uh, www.kidneytrails.com and read my personal story, my, my blog on there. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm I'm currently going to be uh, writing my next blog soon uh, on Hope with Jonathan and uh, why I started Hope with Jonathan. So uh, look for that next blog soon. Uh, but uh, some amazing, some amazing blog writings on there as well from uh, some different authors. Uh, who are who are some of the other authors that are on there, uh, Anthony? So we have um, also uh, I have Carol Jones, uh, our chief dietitian officer. She is uh, 
writing for us as well. She kind of writes recipes, maybe some different uh, information about the kidney, about the renal diet, things that would help. Uh, so uh, it's wonderful to have her on board. She does a fantastic job. Uh, we also have uh, Tawana Staley. Uh, she wrote it. She's wrote, written some things. Uh, there is one as well, Brooke Shepard. She wrote one, and Jonathan, I don't know how much you know about it, but back in the day, they had what was called the death panel. And somehow one of her family had to go before the death panel. Okay. to be on dialysis so yeah. she wrote she wrote that story and allowed us to publish it for her that is an amazing story uh, i've got yeah. marco uh santana from De- davida he's written a fabulous story he was actually him and i actually spoke at nan together we both shared the stage and he's just a fabulous person to get to know fabulous he's got a fabulous story we have yeah. thelma um who has another wonderful story. We have Alex Berrios, which I believe he's a friend of yours. He yep. came on and wrote a story about his experience. Uh, yep. Darren Colley, uh yep. from Ireland. He came on and wrote a wonderful story. I believe it was the uh, roller coaster, kidney disease roller coaster. Yep. We have um, Eric, uh, uh, I may uh, mess up his last name. Um, he's from biomed X. He's the biomed that, uh, Dwaylon had come right. So he's done a fabulous job. And Wills Porter, he's our newest guest author. And we have a few more lined up coming down yeah. the road. And if anybody's interested, just um, don't hesitate to reach out to us at Kidney Trails. And we'll be more than happy to discuss possibly getting you on as the guest author. Yeah. The, that's awesome. Yeah, I've read some of these blogs, and I'm telling you, if you're if you're not reading some of these blogs, uh, if you're not going over and checking it out, you're you're definitely missing out. Uh, there's power in writing. There's power in expression. There's power in sharing your personal story, uh, personal ideals, especially when you're battling a chronic illness. Uh, it's a it's a way of expression, um, a way of relief. It was actually my my blog was actually therapeutic for me. Um, when I wrote my blog, I found myself uh, in an emotional state uh, that I thought that I had kind of pushed some of that away, evidently, and I thought I had dealt with it. And actually, uh, I hadn't because emotional emotions began to run uh, as I was writing my my uh, my blog. And uh, even my wife came in the room and uh, she was she was reading my blog and she began to get emotional. So. Uh, it was definitely a therapeutic um, uh, expression for me. Uh, I don't know about other uh, writers that they've experienced that as well. I'm sure they have. But uh, what a what a way to share your story. What a way to uh, you know share uh, uh, your uh, opinions on, on uh, kidney disease and what you've you know been through. Yeah, it, I'll tell you too, uh, Jonathan. Sometimes it is therapeutic, even for me as well. Uh, there's been times, I think my COVID story so far has been probably the most uh, challenging for me to write and most emotional for me to write. I was writing part of it one night uh, and I had tears coming down that I couldn't even see the screen. (laughs) And, but I mean, that's things that, you know, I generally don't share with anybody, of course, and I'm sharing it with everybody, but that's, yeah. Something that people don't see that goes into this. It's not only we're writing, but there's emotions that, you know, you've experienced, Jonathan, I've experienced it. I'm not sure about everybody else. I know that it, it does help me sometimes to clear my head when I write about it, but it it, it is, it is, a, it can be very emotional, but it's also very encouraging, especially when you start seeing people being able to actually read it and, and hoping they got something, you know, one of the things yeah. I say I've said is, if I can touch one, just affect one person in a positive way, then it's worth every single mile of the trip that I have traveled, every single uh, challenge that I have been through, every single needle stick. Maybe the needle stick didn't go quite right. Maybe the day wasn't the best. But if one person can take anything from it and it maybe change the direction that they're going, change their direction of thinking, then it's worth everything that I've done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, you, uh, most definitely, most definitely. If if anything, uh, it's if it gives someone inspiration to keep going and keep fighting, you know, because uh, let's just face it, kidney disease is a chronic illness. It, it can be mentally draining. It can be tough. 
especially on the emotions and not just on you, but your family members. Uh, so it can be uh, really a tough lifestyle. And so if anything, we can inspire someone to give them hope to live another day and keep fighting, uh, keep pushing. And, uh, you know, I think that that, like you said, if we can just reach one, then we've done our job for the day. So definitely, definitely. <laughs> Well, I think we pretty much answered my next question, which was what does kidney trails offer? But I think we've pretty much, uh, you know, answered that question. Do you have anything that maybe you could uh, enlighten us on that kidney trails off offers as well? I will say keep an eye out. We have got a ton of things coming up. Um, I will say we are going to be releasing, uh, which we've never done. Ever, a lot of people do. but We are going to be releasing a newsletter every month. It's going to have some not only valuable information, but there may be a cartoon strip or a comic strip on, on that to help uh, others okay. along the way. We kind of have a little cartoon that we do, but, you know, so you might see a little bit of that. Uh, we have some wonderful things. Uh, also, check out our partners that is making this possible. And Hope for Jonathan is one of those partners as well. So we're grateful for that. Uh, also, in the fall, I'm going to go ahead and kind of semi-announce it. We don't have any dates set, but it does look like we are probably going to do a conference in the fall for those that it, it from all walks of life. It can be kidney disease. It could be liver disease. It could be a, a high school kid, a high school kid. It could be anybody, a conference to help anybody to inspire them along their way to share our lessons, what we've learned with them to help them along the way. So that's coming up. Uh, we have, like I said, with, with some of the other things we've got planned out. So there's a lot of things coming down, down the line. Yeah. So we're very excited. So my next question for you was going to be, uh, where do you see kidney trails uh, going in the future? And, and you pretty much look, sound like you pretty much covered that as well, but uh, don't you have a podcast coming out as well? We do. We do. And there's going to be a we're doing a podcast. We'll be hopefully releasing it this month. We released a trailer and I kind of got behind on some things with uh, with work and everything. But we will be releasing it this month along with a special insert clip from another organization. So that's all I'm going to say about that. Look for that. That is an amazing, amazing clip from this organization. And so we are very excited for that. Uh, so that's coming down. Like I said, there's just a lot of things. And I, I guess one of the reasons I'm doing the podcast and then we're doing, um, you know, the newsletter is this is kidney month. This is uh, the kidney month, something that we try to raise awareness and something that I definitely take special note of. Yeah. What what type of things are you going to do with the podcast? Are you going to interview people or are you just going to cover, uh, you know, kidney disease and things like that? What what type of things can we look for from the podcast? Well, the one thing is I I focus on mainly from from anything is I want people I want I, it's we have a lot of people that are giving a ton of information about kidney disease. You're one of those. We've got several other different shows and that's great. I don't want to, uh, I, I want to do something a little different. And so we're going to go at it from uh, a different angle. We're going to start dealing with some of the, uh, some of the lessons that I learned along the way. We're going to dive deeper into those, uh, give a little bit more insight and in what I did and some of the different things that others have done. So we're going to be discussing that uh, you, you can look for that. We're going to talk about the 99%, uh, the battle where the battle is. We're going to talk about that. I know that's one of them. Yeah. And we're going to talk about positive thinking, how it can help. We'll be talking about some of the different lessons uh, of life. Uh, one of those we'll probably be talking about is learn it the first time, or you may be doomed to repeat it. And that may be even worse. And there's always going to be stories along the way and along the journey. So it's not just, it's going to be kidney disease, but it's going to be these lessons. It's going to be some philosophy. It's going to be some teaching moments, you know, things that, yeah. that I felt. That's the things that I was craving when I was on the machine is like, that's what I wanted to learn. I want to learn from others. And I was able to learn those from the kidney coaches, but that's where we're kind of honing in right in that. And we've got some other great shows that we're looking at doing as well. Yeah. 
And we might have a special well, that sounds person. awesome. Okay, okay. No, that sounds awesome. That sounds amazing. Um, you know, in this, I realize we need var variety. Uh, not only do we need people talking about uh, kidney disease and uh, educating people on kidney disease we, and, uh, you know, helping people find donors and sharing patient stories, but we need a variety and different styles of how to do it. And, uh, you know, and so I think it's awesome uh, what you're going to be doing. Uh, where, where will we be able to find that podcast on Spotify, maybe? Uh, so right now, as far as I know, we're on Spotify. I'll have to look again. It's yep. been a while, but I know we're on Spotify. I know that if I, on my phone, it's just the podcast, it pops up. Uh, we're on a couple of those different platforms. I don't remember them all. My, yeah. uh, it's a lot to remember, but you can also go on our website and at the com, and there's a link for podcasts and you can click there and it'll show where the podcast is located as well. All right. All right. Well, guys, you heard it first to go over to Spotify, check out Kidney Trails podcast and you guys will uh, be able to follow along. That sounds like some exciting uh, stuff, uh, you know, inspiring, motivational uh, creativity is going to come out of that podcast. So be on the lookout for the podcast. Um, so, Anthony, we live in a day and hour of uh, social media. So where can we find Kidney Trails on social media? So right now we do have. Um we're on Facebook, which I think we just recently got into that. Uh, we're on Instagram. We are on uh, LinkedIn. And that's something that I never saw really a lot of kidney uh, or some kidney organizations do it, but we're on LinkedIn as well. So we're on those three platforms at this time. And that's where you can yeah. see it. You can check out a Facebook page, um, which we are in the process of updating that. We're going to be uh, – you know, on Instagram, we got just basically, you know, the pictures, the stories where you can go read it at. And that's also a very good place as well. OK, so Facebook, Instagram and LinkedIn, which believe it or not, I'm on LinkedIn as well. And that's normally a site that people use for a job search and uh, to, you know, kind of put themselves out there uh, with their resume and stuff. But I have found guys seriously there's there is a large kidney community on there and uh, I've got a lot of connections that I've made. They call them connections on uh, LinkedIn. And believe it or not, this is where I've connected with Anthony Reed. Uh, so uh, if, you, if you're interested at all, you know, and you haven't started an account with LinkedIn, go over and check it out. Uh, there's a lot of people on there that are involved in the kidney community. Uh, different organizations are on there. Uh, so just don't uh, keep yourself on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. Uh, reach out to LinkedIn as well. Uh, it's a great platform. Definitely, definitely. I, you know, Dwayne kind of got me started on that too when I met him back in Dan. I had a LinkedIn account, really didn't do much with it, and then he kind of got me started on it. So it kind of kind of goes back to him, <laughs> him yep. as well. So it's yep. been. Uh, it's definitely a, a platform that we can share, you know, it's, that's one place I do share my blog quite a bit on. Yep. It's our blogs generally run about three to five minutes. Some can get a little longer than that. I feel like if you get too much longer after that, people lose interest in reading. Yeah. Uh, it's, you know, you can take three to five minutes to read rather than a whole book. So uh, yep. we do post and, you know, people do seem to like it. All right. All right. Good stuff, Anthony. It sounds really awesome. So we've got guys, you got uh, we've covered the social media. We know where you can find uh, Anthony uh, and Kidney Trails on social media. Uh, also, uh, we know where to find Kidney Trails at www.kidneytrails.com. Of course, I've been uh, marketing it uh, at the bottom of the screen there, the, pretty much the whole show. <laughs> uh, so uh, uh, but uh just shame, shameless plugs here for uh, Kidney Trails. It's an amazing project that he's got going on, mate. Uh, Anthony Reed has a great uh, thing going on uh, with many different blogs. And, uh, you know, you heard it first here. He's going to be uh, launching a podcast and uh, a lot of great projects. So please uh, go check out www.kidneytrails.com. Um, hey, Anthony, if you would, would you leave us uh, with with some posit uh, positive uh, notes uh, for any warriors out there that are right now battling kidney disease or uh, maybe they're on the transplant list or maybe they're just, you know, on dialysis? 
uh, can you can you leave us with some um, uh, some motivational words for those that are, are currently fighting and, and maybe facing a tough time at the moment? When I think of where some of us have been and the stories that we have, I also think of those that are up and coming. And it is challenging when we start seeing more and more in the kidney community due to dialysis and due to uh, people that are needing transplants. The first thing I would say to each and every one of you, be encouraged. Uh, you know, we have traveled this before. This this path is, I, I remember when I first started, it felt like I went into a place that was traveled very few and far in between. I've told the story many times. I felt like I was walking in the middle of the park and all of a sudden had to take a detour and, and start the kidney trails. And it wasn't a very... Uh, it wasn't a very a view or a path that most anybody really would want to take. It had a rusty gate that could barely open, and the path was not was not well traveled, and there was a huge mist. But keep traveling, and you know, if you're just starting this, if you're on it, it's worth it to keep traveling to, to see the view from the peak. I have been at the peak in many peaks, many times, and the view just gets more and more beautiful. The challenges may be difficult, but they help us to grow. They give us the, uh, the, and they give us that, that we need to be able to go on further. And then to be able to share our stories, share the lessons. And that's so key to share the lessons, not only share a story, but share the lessons. It really helps each of us. It's helped me. The other thing is to be strong. Sometimes I don't know what you may be facing, what you may be going through, or what you may be growing through, but stay strong within it. Sometimes it may feel like you're down to your last second and that you can't move. You know, what is it? I think Les Brown said it. If if I can look up, I can get up. And that was one thing, too. One of the things I said when when I when I had COVID was that COVID knocked me down, but I was still able to look up. And as long as you're able to look up, you can get up. And you know what? If if things get even more challenging and it may feel like you failed, I've I've been there. I've I've walked that path of failure, not only in kidney disease and my kidneys failing, but in other avenues. Keep trying. It's worth it. You know, I'd rather it's it's much more to say that I tried than I never tried. It's rather much more to say I failed than to never have even tried. So keep encouraged, keep strong, and be of good courage. For we will see you at the top. Wow, so inspiring, uh, Anthony. Thank you for those um, motivational words and inspiring words of hope. Uh, of course, hence the words uh, hope with Jonathan. That's what we're here for. We're trying to give people hope. Uh, this is one of the reasons why I teamed up with uh, uh, Kidney Trails. When Anthony messaged me, uh, you know, I knew right away. And, and once I zoomed with him and met with him and we discussed what he was doing, I knew right away that I wanted to be involved. And so uh, I'm glad that uh, I was able to uh, actually meet uh, Anthony Reed and that he reached out to me. And um, it's it's been an awesome collaboration. I, I feel like me and him was going to be working together, uh, you know, for a long time to come. Uh, I like what he's doing and it's a very positive uh uh, motivational, inspiring um, ideal in, uh, uh, at www.kidneytrails.com. So I definitely appreciate Anthony Reed coming on and uh, telling his story and uh, sharing with us today. Guys, this has been a real treat. Uh, please uh, go check out the website. And uh, you guys take care out there. Stay safe. Anthony, you want to send any shout outs or say uh, any uh, hellos or goodbyes to anybody? Just everybody be encouraged. We appreciate everything you are doing and keep strong. All right, guys. This has been another show with Hope with Jonathan. Stay safe out there and remember to take care of your kidneys.
Hey guys, welcome to Hope with Jonathan podcast. Thanks for all the support for the podcast. Also for Hope with Jonathan. Definitely appreciate it. If you're interested in helping out and supporting what we're doing with Hope with Jonathan and the Hope with Jonathan podcast, you can definitely do so by clicking on the listener support. Also, you can find us on social media at Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, We're also on YouTube and you can find us also on TikTok. All you have to do is type in Hope with Jonathan and you can find Hope with Jonathan podcast. You can find us on almost all platforms, uh, mainly on Spotify and Apple podcasts. Um, We're on some others, but feel free to find us on any platform that you can. Thanks again, guys, for tuning in and listening to Hope with Jonathan. Appreciate your support. Thank you very much. KidneyTrails.com Kidney Trails is an organization that is dedicated to helping those that may be facing kidney disease by education, inspiration, and motivation. By bringing real life experience from those that have traveled the road of kidney disease and also information from the medical professionals to help you on your journey. Guys, Kidney Trails offers blog writings from many different writers and authors who give an aspect and real life experiences with battling kidney disease, dialysis, transplant, and more. Guys, KidneyTrails.com has videos. They also offer a podcast called the Kidney Trails Podcast. And soon to be released, a comic book is coming out. Guys, for more information on this, go to www.kidneytrails.com. Hey guys, definitely appreciate you tuning in to the Hope with Jonathan podcast. Again, guys, appreciate all the love. Uh, feedback shares and uh, appreciate uh, everyone's uh, support for the podcast and what we're doing with Hope with Jonathan. Again, I appreciate my guest, uh, Mr. Anthony Reed from www.kidneytrails.com. Please guys go over and please check out the website. Uh, They have uh, some amazing authors on there that write some incredible blogs, uh, very motivational and inspiring Uh, Again, guys, please go check it out, www.kidneytrails.com. This has been an amazing, amazing podcast, amazing interview, a transplant story, a beautiful transplant story from Mr. Anthony Reed uh, from Kidney Trails. Again, guys, I want you guys to uh, definitely uh, be on the lookout for more projects from uh, Hope with Jonathan and uh, a podcast from uh, Hope Media Productions in collaboration with Impact American media. Uh, Again, guys, we appreciate all the love and support. And uh, we're going to close out this podcast again. Guys, I want you to stay safe out there. And remember to take care of your kidneys. God bless you.